Hey guys, this is Mr. Sandoval back with weekly video number four. So let's go. Let's uh, a couple of reminders. Let's not forget to check your Jupiter grades every day, if possible. It only takes a few seconds, but it really helps. Okay. Let's make sure that you have all your materials. Okay. Everything's organized in each folder for each class. Again, check your backpack. It only takes a few seconds every day to kiss, to stay organized. Um, check your agenda. Remember, there's never an excuse to forget anything. If you, this long weekend, Labor Day weekend, but as soon as you think of school, think, oh no, I got to check my agenda and run through it real quick. Take a few seconds and check off that you have everything done. Again, there's no excuse to say, I didn't know or I forgot. It's right there in your agenda, and that only takes a couple seconds to look over. All right, you need a piece of paper and title it homework video week number four and at the end of the video I'll tell you what to write down okay so here we go today we're gonna to talk about body organization and this is getting us into chapter four okay um, we're now into life science we've been thinking like a scientist and doing some labs and things like that so now we're actually gonna get into some life science and start talking about cells and using the microscope in the upcoming week okay so what I really want you to remember is that cells make tissues, tissues make organs, and organs make systems. And a little way to remember it is CTOS, okay? And we'll come back to that. So let's remember that we are made of cells, okay? We are made of many cells. And I'll have you this week try to guess how many cells we're, we are made of. But we're made of many different cells, okay? Brain cells, fat cells heart cells, red blood cells, nerve cells, skin cells, the list goes on and on. And every cell has a special shape, special size, and it has a special job, okay? And you can kind of tell by looking at a cell probably maybe what its job is by its shape and its size, okay? And we're made of many cells, all right? And every living organism plants, animals, you name it, are made of cells. Some organisms, like this bacteria here, are made of one cell. They are only one cell. Often we think of these as germs, right? And here is a paramecium. It is also made of one cell. And again, they have their own special shape and sizes, and they do their own special thing, okay? So, but we're obviously, we're not just cells. The cells are actually compartmentalized and they're put into special teams and structures, okay? So here we go. Cells, okay, let's start with the smooth muscle cell. This is a special cell that we find in our digestive system. Cells make tissues, okay? A team of cells is a tissue, all right? And tissues get put together into a special unit called an organ, okay? So these smooth muscle tissue cells get put into a team that makes the stomach, okay? The stomach. But the stomach doesn't work alone. It works with other organs to digest food. So that is called the digestive system. So we got cells, tissues, organs, and systems. And the stomach works with the small intestine, the large intestine, the liver, gallbladder, pancreas to do the work of digesting food. And all the systems, okay, your circulatory system, your respiratory system, your integumentary system, your nervous system, your muscular system, your skeletal system, they all work together in one huge team, and that is us, right? That is our whole, us as a full multicellular organism, okay? But again, if we go in reverse, we get all the way back down to individual cells that have individual jobs and they're really small you can't see them with your eye but think of Legos think of a huge Lego structure okay from far away it looks really enormous but when you get way down into it there's just individual little Lego bricks that make up this huge structure okay all right Here's another analogy. Think of um, all the individual papers that you use in each class as the cells. And you put all of those papers into a proper folder. Okay, so you, that those papers are a team, they're for one class, they're all the same subject, and they go into one folder together. And then you take all those folders, kind of like organs, and you put those all together, and that's your whole day. That's all of your classes, and each folder has its own special papers just for that class. You don't want to take your science paper and put it into your science fold, um, into your math folder because it doesn't belong there. It's not going to work. 
Okay, your teacher's not going to want you to turn in that paper. And then you take all your folders and you put them into a binder and hopefully, and that's another level of organization and they're all in the right compartment and in the right spot. And then you take that binder and you put it in your backpack. And in your backpack you have special pockets and places, different shapes and sizes for all of your, your pencils and your books and your notebooks and your, and your folders and your binder and, and whatever else, pens and pencils. And they each have their own special place and this whole backpack works for you to keep you organized. All right? But again, if we started digging in and pulling out each individual notebook and binder and, and folder, we would get down to what? To back to the individual papers that we started with. And that's sort of like how your body works. We would get back to cells. Okay, once again, if we take this big organism, this big person, and we break, break it down and we get deeper and deeper and deeper, we would just get right back down to the individual cell. All right? Okay, so for your assignment, put the title homework video number four at the top. Also write the title body organization. And I want you to fill in the four levels of organization that I just talked about. I gave you the first letters here, CTOS, C-T-O-N-S. What do those stand for? Fill that in. I also want you to answer this question. Why do you think cells are so small? Why is it important that for a big organism like us, that our cells are so small, so small that we can't see them with our eye, we need a microscope to see them. Why do you think that would be beneficial to a, to a big organism to have so many, many, many cells that we can't even see? How would that be better than having, you know, a few large cells? Okay, and then also I want you to so answer that question and then draw a picture that helps summarize what you've learned about in this video. Okay, so get that done and I will see you in class. Bye.